Good morning and welcome to worship at First United Methodist Church, Allenburg. We're so happy you're joining us today on the second Sunday in Advent. And we give you a warm greeting from our sanctuary. And we're so glad you are joining us from your homes or wherever you're watching. We want to uh, give a little hello and let you see who's here this morning. We wish we could see your faces online. Just give a little wave to our friends uh, at uh, home. That, that wasn't a very enthusiastic wave. I mean, <laughs> I, you think we'd be quite practiced at this too. That's wonderful. Okay. And there's a oh, oh, thank you so much. All right. We turn our hearts to God now. And uh, we'll need our hymnals for the first, the hymn of praise, number 203. And then keep your hymnals ready very quickly. After that, we'll sing 211, the second verse. Of 211 for the lighting of the Advent candle. So just uh, let's keep our hymnals ready, all right? I invite you to stand as you're able in body or in spirit as we sing our hymn of praise, held to the Lord's anointing, number 203. <laughs> Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named 
Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ, our Prince of Peace. May the visit, visitation of our Holy Spirit make us ready for the coming of Jesus, who is our hope and peace. Amen. Amen. from of old that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. To guide our feet into the way of peace. Our verse reflection today. And uh, this is a wonderful season. Second Sunday now in Advent and we're thinking about this season as a spiritual journey for ourselves. Though we might already know the Christmas story, it is so good to have it renewed for us, the retelling. And uh, so we hear with, with our ears open today to Holy Scripture. One way to uh, hear the Scripture retold, the story retold or interpreted is at this season to attend a Christmas play. Or Christmas musical or a Christmas cantata and uh, we're so grateful for our choir and this morning our soloists and, uh, they help us to hear the scripture in a beautiful new way and uh, I'm very pleased to say that this year uh, after having skipped last year in the pandemic of having a Christmas play this year we are going to uh, produce a very heartfelt, simple, sincere retelling of the Christmas story. And so I hope, I hope you can come here, you know, in town, you can come on December 22nd. Uh, we'll look forward to that. And um, so when I was looking for a script to use that would fit our age ranges, um, and I uh, ran across 
lots of lots of video recordings of other churches, productions of a variety of, of uh, scripts and playwrights' work. And you've probably witnessed them yourselves or uh, seen them on YouTube, but the little bloopers and mishaps at Christmas musicals that are cantatas that can sometimes occur, uh, where someone forgets a line or, or adds a funny line or um, in one video, uh, they had a real camel and uh, the man pulling the camel, uh, the camel was recalcitrant, shall we say, did not want to walk down the aisle of the church. Oh. And so, so the, the man playing the part of Joseph was pulling on, pulling on, and the more he pulled, the more the camel resisted. And finally, the camel just fell over on top of several of the church members. <laughs> so be careful where you sit. Uh, you know, and then uh, there was one a really cute production. You might have seen it because uh, it occurred in Morristown, which is very nearby, at Gatlinburg. And uh, this video was on the nightly news and, and went viral on YouTube, uh, where this, the church had a well-rehearsed children's choir uh, producing this Christmas musical and so the children's choir was just perfectly attentive to their choir conductor, choir director. They were robed in their little angelic costumes. Their eyes were on the director. They knew the words to Away in a Manger and they were singing so beautifully in tune and in an ensemble. And then across the sanctuary was a manger scene with a little uh, five or six-year-old boy playing the role of Joseph and probably a five-year-old girl in the role of Mary with a little manger and a doll baby in the manger and then maybe a four-year-old boy as a donkey and a three-year-old girl as a lamb. And so during this beautiful singing of a way in the manger, just, just lovely singing, three-year-old lamb girl decided she wanted to play with baby Jesus. <laughs> so she picked them up and started dancing with Jesus to the way in the major music. And, and I was so impressed that the little children's choir kept their, their attention focused on their choir director. Um, and um, the more three-year-old lamb girl danced with Jesus, the more upset five-year-old Mary became. And so Mary decided to sort of wrestled Jesus out of the hands of the lamb girl. And, and the more she pulled, the more three-year-old used her muscles somehow. Anyway, so Mary finally just had to tackle lamb girl to get baby Jesus back to the manger. <laughs> it, was, it was so cute. And I thought that was interesting that, you know, in a Baptist church, I don't think you want to dance with baby Jesus. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea. But anyway, but those, those, it seems like the little mishaps and the bloopers that occur, the, the more adorable the production is and the more memorable it is. We don't forget those moments. And so we can rehearse our lines, whether we're adults in a cantata or children in a play. You know, we can practice, rehearse, memorize, and um, it's sometimes those little uh, mistakes or spontaneous uh, little actions and, and sayings that, that we take to heart. They help us to hear the Christmas story in, in a new way. Something new is emphasized for us when, when those things occur. And so we ask your prayers for our youth as we uh, prepare for, for our, our Christmas play this year. Uh, there aren't going to be any solos, but the congregation will sing with us on, on the Christmas carols. So in uh, any kind of a Christmas production, wherever it is, the director has to find um, willing and able persons to fill each role. And sometimes there are these major characters that need to be, those roles that need to be filled. And so you need uh, children who can memorize their lines or, or read well, you know, for their lines and, uh, and, uh, and narrators and such. And here comes our, our, I'm talking about our youth Christmas play, here comes our director. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, then there are minor roles, maybe non-speaking parts. You need maybe some wise men or 
uh, angels for the heavenly chorus, you know, there are non-speaking parts or minor roles, maybe an angel who has a few lines. Um, and so I was looking through our script and I noticed that the playwright indicated that this production lasts approximately 45 minutes. And I said, oh dear, uh, as we just recently resumed our Wednesday night uh, youth meetings and dinners, you know, we don't have many Wednesdays for rehearsing. I think 45 minutes is going to be too long, you know, to, to, to manage. So, in front of God and everybody, I have to confess that the pages 5 through 11 have been cut. And so that means in our Christmas play, uh, we'll omit the parts of Zechariah and Elizabeth. So I just, I'll just confess right now, no room for them in the end, <laughs> Zechariah and Elizabeth. Uh, it, it, you know, okay. So, but this morning, lo and behold, the gospel lesson includes a major part for Zechariah. So hopefully I'm helping to redeem the cutting of, out of pages 5 through 11 by listening to the voice of Zechariah. And this is Zechariah's song. Uh, in some Bibles, it might be marked Canticle of Zechariah. It's, a, it's become a very famous, um, very famous part of the gospel. And many choirs sing those beautiful, beautiful words of praise. Now, we have to remember that what we heard from Andy's reading, that section of the first chapter in Luke's gospel, uh, that, is, that did not include the previous story about how the angel spoke to Zechariah. And he was an older gentleman, a priest in the temple. And so he was well versed in things religious and was very dedicated in, uh, in his commitment to the temple and leadership there and would have known the laws of Moses, the scriptures. He had prayed with his wife for maybe decades to have a child. But that prayer was not answered as they wished it to be. So when this angel appeared to Zechariah in his old age and announced that, that he and his wife would have a son, um, Zechariah said something along the line of, excuse me, what? <laughs> you know, how am I to believe this is true? How am I to believe this can be true? And uh, so the angel Gabriel rendered Zechariah mute for not believing the message that the Lord was sending through the angel. So for the nine months of Elizabeth's pregnancy, Zechariah had to do a lot of listening and no speaking. Now, you can learn a lot when you're not speaking, especially for a nine-month period. Can you imagine? And so what was it that Zechariah learned about the working of the Holy Spirit and the promises of the possibilities of our God? The priestly role was to stir the prayers of the people who would come to the temple, and now Zechariah and Elizabeth we're going to see the stirring of their prayers for so many years fulfilled, fulfilled. And so when is it that we fall mute and cannot say a word because we are disappointed that our prayers haven't been answered or we're, we are resentful because of something that has occurred or that hasn't happened? Or we fall mute because we have been silenced by someone or by an institution or by rules and laws. 
And so we want to pay attention to Zechariah and his major role for us today and find out what he discovered by being muted for such a lengthy time. What did he hear? And so when he does get to speak after his son John has been born, he utters this wonderful canticle of praise, praising God and recounting God's wonderful deeds to his people over the generations and the centuries. And so Zechariah's role in this biblical story helps us link the Old Testament, Old Covenant, to the New Covenant. And so he, his final line is to lead us to walk in the way of peace. And today we light the peace candle. We want to think about peace. And we are taught and we learn that Peaceful situations cannot occur until there is justice. And so we think about people who are trying to find a way to walk into a place of peace. Or maybe they're, they've been so uh, downtrodden, oppressed, abused, uh, forgotten, whatever it is, so much that they can barely move their feet forward. Yet some of them find the strength and determination to move forward, looking for a safe passage to a place that is peaceful. And the gospel lessons teach us that the one that Zechariah's son John is leading the way to open is for our Savior, who is the Prince of Peace. Peace. I like the way St. Francis of Assisi said so long ago, while you are proclaiming peace with your lips, be careful to have peace even more fully in your heart. Be careful to have peace more fully in your heart. And we might pray for world peace while our own hearts are troubled at home or just by ourselves struggle the struggle within or the struggle against temptations the struggle against our past what prayer can god be answering for all of us this advent to make our lives more peaceful that our hearts make more room for peace that others around us are more peaceful and see the wonderful gift of peace and the community beyond that can see the wonderful gift of peace. And then maybe the community beyond that will see the wonderful gift of peace. But we must be workers for justice. And so today I do ask your prayers for all pilgrims, pilgrims by choice or pilgrims by force who need the strength to make steps forward. Think of the... Uh, persons migrating from Afghanistan to escape, make a way towards peace out of a land of warfare and, and torture and violence and poverty and oppression and despair. Think of so many persons we've met uh, making a passage to safety here from other countries, Honduras or where, wherever, uh, where they have not experienced freedoms and justice. And so how can we be part of the answer to prayers for others so that we are workers for justice that can help to bring about God's peace? So one lesson we learned from Zechariah in our period of listening and waiting for the Holy Child to come is to continue to have faith in our faithful God. He has an answer to our prayers that might be completely unexpected and that we might have to wait to receive, but our God hears us. There is a, a wonderful prayer that we're going to use as our 
closing in the Christmas play. And uh, Susie and I haven't uh, selected just the certain character yet, uh, or the child in this role, um, to pray this prayer. But it can be our prayer today and our prayer for our children as they uh, make preparations for rehearsals. This is our prayer of Advent with Zechariah's help. May we be filled with the wonder of Mary. May we be filled with the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the ter termination of the Magi, the faith of Zechariah and Elizabeth, and the peace of the Christ child. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us all with his peace, now and forever. <coughs>
and also with thanksgivings for for Christmas music and uh, the beauty of, of the sanctuary and all Dennis and Arlene and Nell and Beezy and Nelson and Jet and Matt and those who helped us. Uh, thank you so very, very much uh, for making this a beautiful season. And we want to celebrate uh, birthdays. We always like to mention the joy of birth and birthdays. And so this week we're celebrating with Joyce Mack, who was at our 830 service, and with Susan Perry. So we wish, wish them a wonderful week. And any uh, we're so accustomed to having guests every week. We welcome guests and we want to know, do you all have birthdays or anniversaries you're celebrating? Anybody? Okay. Got quite a few new faces. Thank you. So glad you're here. It's a joy for us for you to be here today. And um, on our prayer list, we have our prayer list before you. I do want to mention that uh, several of us were able to attend the funeral service for Miss Dorothy Stalkup yesterday in uh, Sevierville. And Miss Dorothy lived to be 98 and a half years old. And so we are just thankful for her life and her witness and her love for our family and this church and the community. We also extend sympathy to Bernard Albers and Tracy Hensley, Blake Miles, in the death of Haley Albers Short. Uh, who died also last Sunday. Uh, I'll just mention that Haley was 27 years old and a, a mother of a young uh, preschool child. So uh, a lot of prayers needed for that family. And our prayer list is before you. Oh, um, Glenn Culp is here. Uh, we've been praying for Glenn after, I mean, I don't want to give too much information out on YouTube or anything, but we're glad you're here, Glenn and feeling able to be out and about. And um, then Evelyn Reagan has a big joy about hosting home for children. And so I asked her to come and uh, so that the people at home can see, see her. Uh, every year we send gifts to Holson Home and Evelyn is our manager of that wonderful ministry. Good morning, everyone, and Merry Christmas, and the, the church is beautiful, and it gets you in the spirit of Christmas. First of all, I want to say a big thank you to Jerry Velosky. She's a member of our church, and for years she has been making these stockings for me, and she's very, very creative. On the stock, the green one is uh, the boys' stocking, and it has trucks and decorated in red, and the little girls has got all kinds of things on it, and I fill these with candy, chocolate candies, because one little boy said, all I want for Christmas is some chocolate, <laughs> and I, I put candy canes in it, I put uh, uh, moon pies, I put a moon pie in it this year for each one of them, and I, I put Tootsie, those big Tootsie suckers in it, and things like that, and I fill them up, so, and uh, this year I did something different because they have five cabins, two cabins are for girls, they're about ten in each cabin, and three cabins are for the boys, and this year I thought, huh, they need to have something like a family because they live together in a cabin, so I bought each cabin a basketball for them to share, a Monopoly game, and a scrabble game. And this is something new, but the girls, I buy them, and there's about uh, 40, uh, 30, 39 girls or 40, and I buy them bath and body sets, which is the clone lotion, the shower gel, uh, the clone and lotion, I'm sorry, and the shower gel, with the, I buy each one of them a, a girl sponge, and uh, I bought them uh, something different different this year, like a little uh, uh, butterflies, uh, uh, bears, and little animals, a uh, little dancing stars where you put it in their window. I thought they'd enjoy something dancing in the tandem. And I bought them all a fleece soft blanket, all the girls. And the boys, I bought them a, a fleece 
blanket and shower gel with sponge and they got necklaces, cross necklaces made out of wood and bracelets said what would uh, Jesus do and they also got a stocking filled with everything and uh, I also write a letter, hand write a letter to all these 70 children and I put Merry Christmas and a happy and blessed 2022 New Year. We love you and so does all the members of the First United Methodist Church in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And the last thing I put is God loves you too. And uh, I, when it's tax free, I got the bright idea to go buy some composition notebooks. So I bought composition notebooks for, and filled a box full and I bought I, uh, 90 I know uh, those number two pencils so I think all the children will have a very very Merry Christmas this year and one reason I have to take it up there so early is because they they have Christmas early because some of them go home to their parents or somewhere for Christmas a little bit I guess a week or so but uh, the way they get their Christmas is they have a tractor and on this tractor they have a big bed and Santa is driving the tractor and he goes around to all the buildings and delivers the presents to all the children and I do do the like the older children they ask me if I do the older children because a lot of people a lot of the children are in foster homes and they have a better Christmas but the older children so uh, uh, they asked me, said, how long have you been doing this? I said, I have no idea. I know it's been about 30 years. I think I started in 1990. This woman working in an office said, well, I'll tell you one thing. I started working here in 87, 1987. You, you brought them then. <laughs> so I don't know how many years I've been doing this. But I enjoy it. And it's something I enjoy. And it, it makes me have a good Christmas just knowing that we as a church are doing something nice for children. Thank you and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That is certainly a great joy. And uh, so we include the Holson Home children and staff and uh, all those ministries with our prayers. And, let us go to God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you that you made room for us. Major roles and minor roles, they're all important in the work of your kingdom. We pray that you would find us making ourselves available to you to be useful as messengers of peace. And so give us the words to speak or help us to listen carefully when you Tell us it's time to be silent so that we can hear from others the need for justice in this world. And so open our eyes to see the needs of others. Open our ears that we might hear their cries. Open our hearts so that they need not be without comfort. And let us not be afraid to defend the weak because of the anger of the strong, nor afraid to defend the poor because of the anger of the rich. Show us where love and hope and faith are needed and use us to bring others to know the peace of your presence. And so open our eyes and hearts and ears that we may this coming day be able to do some work of peace for you. We make our name, our prayers in the name and spirit of our precious Savior who has taught us to pray this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For us is the end, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to turn to page 13 in your hymnals as we prepare for the sacrament of Holy Communion.
The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Choir will commune first, and then the usher will uh, lead you to the altar area. And let us know whether you need gluten-free elements.
pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others, seeking to be messengers of your peace. <clears throat> Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand in body or spirit for our hymn of response and praise of our Savior's name, number 204. Shall we sing it twice, Peggy? Okay. All right. We'll sing twice, number 204. <laughs>